Welcome to our electron line. Now we've complicated the problem just a little bit by adding friction. So we have the coefficient of kinetic friction now equal to 0 0.2. The blocks are still one kilogram each. There's 10 of them. And of course, we need a little extra force now to also overcome the friction. So first, what we're going to do is find the acceleration of the system. We can say that the F net of the, on the whole system is equal to the total mass times acceleration, or the acceleration equals the net force divided by the total mass. So therefore, the acceleration is equal to the net force, which is the 40 newtons applied to the system, minus the friction force that force must overcome, divided by the total mass of 10 kilograms. Now the friction force is equal to, by definition, the normal force times mu, and on a flat surf surface, the normal force is simply the weight of the blocks, and of course the floor pushing back, so this is equal to mg times mu, and this would be of course mu sub k. So in this case, acceleration is equal to 40 newtons minus the friction force, let's plug it in here, so we have uh, 10 kilograms for the total mass, times 9.8 meters per second square times 0 0.2. That would be 98 times 0 0.2, which is 19.6 newtons. So here it's 40 newtons minus 19.6 newtons divided by 10 kilograms, which is equal to 20.4 newtons divided by 10 kilograms, which is equal to 2.04 meters per second square. So that would be the acceleration of the whole system, of course, also the acceleration of each block. Now, what would be the net force on block 7? Well, let's see here. We have 40 newtons applied to 10 blocks. So, we apply 40 newtons to 10 blocks, that means each block receives a force of 4 newtons, that will then be used both for the acceleration of the block and to overcome the friction for each block. So that means we have 40 newtons pushing here, we have 36 newtons pushing against block 2, we have 32 newtons pushing against block 3, we have 28 newtons against block 4, we have 24 newtons against block 5, we have 20 newtons against block 6, 16 newtons against block 7, we have, uh, let's see, 12 newtons against block 8, 8 newtons against block 9, and 4 newtons against block 10. So what happened here is that this 40 newtons is divided into 4 equal or 10 equal sections of 4 newtons, and so as we go through each of the blocks, you can see the force pushing against the last 9 is only 36, the last 8 is 32, the last 7 is 28, and so forth. So we can see that the force pushing glass against block 7 is 16 newtons, and the force pushing against block 8 is 12 newtons. So let's put that over here. Here's block 7, mass of 1 kilogram, and we have a force against block 7 of 16 newtons pushing to the, to the right, and we have a force of 12 newtons pushing to the left because if there's 12 newtons pushing against block 8, then block 8 pushes back against block 7 with a force of 12 newtons. Then what we also have is we have the force of friction to overcome here. So let's use a red pen for that. So we have the force of friction here on this one block, which is equal to the weight mg times mu. So in this case, that is equal to 1 kilogram times 9.8 meters per second squared times 0.2 so that's equal to 0.2 times that. That would be 1.96 newtons of friction. And so now you can see that the net force, F net, on that one block is going to be equal to 16 newtons pushing to the right, minus 12 newtons pushing to the left, minus 1.96 newtons to overcome the friction. So this is 4 newtons minus 1.96 newtons, which is equal to 2.04 newtons, which is the net force on just that one block, and that would be the net force on each of the 10 blocks. Another way to find the net force is to say that F net on block 7 is equal to M7 
whoop, m7 times acceleration. So in this case, that is one kilogram times acceleration of 2.04 meters per second squared, which is equal to 2.04 newtons. So you can see that, again, the same two methods work quite nicely in trying to figure out the force on each block. The reason why I went to that first methodology is so you get a kind of good feel of how that force ripples through the various blocks. The force ripples through in such a way that it's the force on the remaining sets of blocks coming after that. And then you take the difference of those two forces, subtract from that the friction force of one block, or simply use the equation F net equals M times A. And that's how it's done.